Hello and welcome to Spa This Morning. I'm Cecilia Amogbe. It's great to have you join us again. I'm Taya Salah. Now let's start from the continent of Africa, talking about the CAF Confederations Cup. We're aimed by their inaction against CARA of Congo Brazzaville today. Mm. Well, they just had a chance to get something out of this one, right? Yeah, all the best to Aimba uh, in that particular match. It's all about consolidating their top position in Group C of the CAF Confederation Cup. Also on the show, uh, this time we're going, yeah, we're still talking football, but this time we're going to Europe, and it's the final of the Europa League tonight between Olympic Marseille and Atletico Madrid. And those two guys on your screen are likely to be the key actors, key players uh, in that particular championship decider. Diego Costa uh, yeah. for Atletico Madrid and the other guy. Just, just What's imagine his name again? Last I can't remember his name. <laughs> Come Dimitri Payet. Oh, yeah, I remember now. From West Ham. Right. You know, just imagine these two guys who play together. Chelsea and West Ham. Right now they play Europa League final. Fantastic. The two of them. Leon ready to host everything in place right now. Mm. Let's move over to the NBA. Mm. Well, I mean, it's a strange one for a club to actually overcome a 42-point performance from LeBron James to actually get the better of Cavs. Talking about this Boston Celtics. 2-0, they're taking the series right now. Is this going to be a sweep? 107-94. Wow. And Johnny Brown had just 23 points. But then, LeBron, who had 42 points, just wasn't enough for the Celtics to take game two. Mm. Now, it's 2-0 in two the Eastern nil. Conference. You know what, Cecilia? The Celtics have never blown a 2-0 series lead in the NBA playoffs. At all. So they have their work cut out talking about the Cleveland mm -hmm. Cavaliers. We'll come back much more later on uh, to the NBA playoffs uh, between those two uh, sides. Uh, but we'll start uh, uh, on the court, uh, not basketball, but tennis uh, right now. And it's all about the Italian Open. That's in Rome. And uh, the young star, Dennis Shapovalov, is mm -hmm. still going strong. I mean, one of those guys uh, a lot of people expect uh, to go on and win majors really, really, really soon. Perhaps uh, when the likes of uh, Roger Federer and Rafael Nadal, when they all retire, then he's going to get his chance. <laughs> but right now, he's, he's, he's playing decent yeah. uh, tennis. Mm -hmm. And um, it was supposed to be a very, very uh, tough matchup for him against mm -hmm. Thomas Bettig. Thomas Bettig, um, fantastic player yeah. as well, also on the ATP tour and the 15th seed. Mm -hmm. And you thought taking on a young star oh, like this, yeah, he would use experience uh, to overwhelm him. But that wasn't the case. Uh, Shapovalov. Uh, to, <laughs> to all his credit, lost the first set, uh, won six. A that dreadful was a one. Disastrous, <laughs> disastrous one. Uh, first Way set. to start. Right. But somehow. But look at how he bounced back. Six, three, seven, six. I, I think when you have a, a player like this, who will have a very dreadful and woeful start. <laughs> and, and the second set, a bit easy for him. And the final set, where he just had to stay on it. Because he could have just thrown away this game. I mean, he went to a tie break. Tie break. And somehow he was able to just, you know, dig deep and get that. So that's the hallmark of a champion. Absolutely. So if he could do this, so this, as you said, uh, when the likes of Roger Federer and Rafael Nadal be every time, <laughs> you will get a shot of winning a grand slam. But for now, with those two guys still very big mm. on court, then I think it's going to be hard for him. If he gets to win, it simply means one of these guys will not be at their best, or there's an injury, or they will not be competing. Mm. That's the only one. But then, just give it to him. He's a good lad. He was able to win this one. one six six three seven six. And up next for him is who? Fantastic. Robin Robin Ass. Ass. Okay. Yeah, I mean, if you've beaten Thomas Berdick, uh, you should go into that matchup against uh, Robbie Ass uh, with a lot of confidence. confidence. And that's what I expect uh, from uh, Dennis Shapovalov when those two guys uh, face off for place in the third round at the Room Masters. So for that's it for um, Shapovalov. Another guy, uh, we talked about him yesterday, uh, David Goffin from Belgium, who has been very consistent as well, so especially towards the mm -hmm. end of last season. Uh, David Goffin as well, too, still powering on yeah. uh, in Rome. Yeah, he also it? lost the first set. Yeah, he also <laughs> lost the first set. But all these guys are showing, like, uh, incredible okay. uh, spirit and character mm -hmm. uh, to come back from uh, adversity. That's David Goffin mm -hmm. right there, having his pulse checked. Clear. Yeah. He looked, you know, he yeah, yeah, struggled he the whole bit. to me, but yeah. what I, a fighter. You know, after that, that struggle and all that, you know, you would think he wouldn't be able to come back, yeah, you know, did. and win. But somehow, after that, he just was able to come back. <laughs> six to six to, I was like, okay, maybe that really helped. So right now, he is in the third round. Of the Italian Open. Fantastic, and to think he was playing against a home, uh, yeah. home favorite. Oh, yeah, home Marco favorite, yeah. Pichinato. Someone that has got a partisan uh, supporter behind him. He was able to overcome all that 
all that adversity uh, to advance uh, into the next round where it's going to take on either Juan oh, Martin Del Potro or the young star from Greece, the mm -hmm. finals, Sissi Sipas. I uh, remember Sissi Sipas uh, mm -hmm. who got to the final and lost to uh, Rafael Nadal yeah, yeah. recently. But he's a very good player as well. So a uh, good one for uh, David Goffin. I expect him to go uh, probably all the way. I, not all the way, no, not all because, the way. I mean, not this so one fast. of these two guys, I mean, one Martin Del Potro and uh, Stefanos for Stefanos have got into the final of the Monte Carlo Masters. Mm. So it seems is another descent a player. Absolutely. So we'll Absolutely. see what's going to happen. We'll see. But I expect that we're going to get uh, probably uh, to the semi-finals. And uh, yeah, who knows what's going to happen from there because he's a very good player uh, on clay as well. Okay. So let's come back home now. Let's talk about season 10 of the channel's International Kids Cup. Yesterday we gave you a few uh, schools that have confirmed uh, their participation in this season's uh, edition. Uh, today we have more, more schools, schools. Uh, that have uh, qualified to represent uh, the various uh, states in this uh, flagship, yeah, grassroots sports, uh, grassroots football uh, competition uh, in Nigeria and Sicilia. Uh, the names are breezing yeah. from four to thirteen. Wow! Okay, starting with Emmanuel Primary, Emmanuel Nazarene Primary School from Adoekiti. Mm. You have a Year One North local government uh, school from. Ogun State, then Central LG EA Primary School from Kwara State. Right. You have Arinze Primary School from Edo State, Baptist Primary School from Moshu, uh, Shekumu Primary, uh, Modern Primary School from Kaduna, and how you can take it from here from number eight, the school from Bornu State. Yeah, Bornu, we are representative from Bornu. Uh, there you also have Magaji Umaru Pilot Primary School from Katsina. That's Dara. Dara sounds familiar. Well, yeah. sounds from there. Okay, yeah, you're president <laughs> of the country. So if the primary school can go all the way to the final, just maybe we just have the president hosting them. Anyway. Why not? Yeah, it happens. <laughs> Also through to the nationals, we have uh, Kotobabi 1 and 2 primary school from Accra, Ghana. Ghana. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Okay, that's the international field uh, we've been talking about. We also have EUC uh, Port Novo. Mm -hmm. That's another school from, uh, from Benin Republic confirmed uh, for this year's edition. And for Lagos State, we've been talking about this one since last week. Of course. Ed's plan to primary school and OK Fako. Primary school, school representing That's it. Uh, this is yeah, this is the state of excellence. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, of course. This is your excellence. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> so all of the schools you're waiting for confirmation from all of the schools mm. across the country, those that will be representing their states. And of course, you know, we started on the 21st of this month. May right. 27th is the final day. And we're gonna know who will be the champions of this year's Channels International Kids Cup. When there's gonna be more fireworks, right? Absolutely. We cannot wait for that one to we start. Uh, the countdown is countdown is on, like mm -hmm. safe to say. Let's move on. And let's go, yeah. Let's 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 <laughs> we're still home or we're not going away from yeah. home just yet. Okay, uh, we're Lagos. This time around. Yeah, we're in Lagos. Mm -hmm. Uh the national stadium. Uh Surulere. I mean that stadium when it was built and uh, was the uh, what's the pride? <laughs> Uh, of course, of, of the everybody country. of the country in terms of um, hosting. The capacity. Uh, yeah. Uh, big. Massive. Massive. But the story is obviously not good. Uh, okay. If anyone has been following, uh, that stadium is, a, is in a story, sorry, sorry, state. And, um, but the story now is that finally the FG, uh, as the federal government, have approved uh, the release of this facility. But it's, it's still ongoing. They haven't officially yeah, released but, it yet. They're yeah, just... but it's... Processing, on, yeah, ongoing. Yeah, it's on the way. It, uh, <laughs> so all, by next week, by hopefully. all indication, everything points to to, uh, to the fact that uh, Lagos State will, you know, have Definitely. a role of this particular facility and get it working again. Yeah, we just can't wait for that. I mean, I love the fact that you know uh, they decided to you know give it to a state that that stadium is built for them to be able to just you know renovate that place and ensure that it's working again. But then another thing Lagos State is trying to do is the fact that they want to try as much as possible to regrass the Tesla Balogu Stadium. You know, it's an artificial turf right now. But if they have a grass there, international matches can be played there. The Super Eagles also can even come to Lagos and play. And all other international games can also be played. And of course, they talked about the other one, talking about um, the Unicorn Stadium also. is another one that is ongoing right now, Agege Stadium and all other stadiums across uh, Lagos. They're trying as much as possible to ensure that all these facilities are put in place. So Lagos will just be one of those places where you can, you know, get uh, all the stadiums will definitely be world class, right? Let's get a reaction from there. 
Okay, uh, we'll get to have that much later on the program. So mm. we'll move on now. Yeah, we'll move on now. We'll just wait uh, for next week uh, when uh, the formal handover is expected uh, to go down uh, from the FG, that's federal government, uh, to uh, handing over officially to the uh, LASG. So yeah. we'll see how that one pans out. Now, it's time to talk about the Nigerian Women's uh, Football League now. Uh, it feels like the league just started a few uh, days ago, but yeah. uh, believe it or not, uh, we are March day six already. So, so how did we get so? <laughs> how did we get to the state so fast? That's the way it is. March day it, six. It's ongoing because I mean, no delays, nothing. All games are being okay. played and all that. Right. Walkovers and everything. So we have a league like that. So just be going on smoothly. Smooth before you know it, so is the end of the season. So March day six, Group A, we have Shaw Babes and Edo Queens will be in action. And Ibo Angels and Confluence Queens will also be in action. Delta Queens and Bayerso Queens, Rivers Angels and Heartland Queens also in action from Group A. Then Group B, you have Oshun Babes and Jukodolu Babes also in action. I mean, this is going to be a big derby for these uh, <laughs> two teams. FC Robo and Pelican Stars. Uh, okay. Okay, these two teams, they drew their last game. Go, uh, go less in, uh, in the Calabar and of course one or draw in Lagos. So they're meeting together, they draw sides, we'll see if they can get three points here. FC Robo, some of their players are returning from Calabar. Five of their key players, you know, are in camp from the Four Connect and also the Super Four Cons. You also have Adamawa Queens and Sunshine Queens who also be in action and Abia Angels and Nasura Amazons also. So these are the teams that will be in action today. So mm -hmm. our concern we're talking about FC Robo and, and, and Pelican Stars and the fact that well when you have players on the continent so you just want to ensure that these players are here for you to be able to prosecute your games. Mm, interesting. Uh, like I said, uh, FC Robo will try to come back and you know get three points. They've not been very impressive uh, this season. Uh, it's been a slow start uh, for FC uh, Robo. Hopefully uh, we'll see whether they can return to the winning ways uh, later today. It's going to be played in Lagos, right? And yeah. It looks like you're going to be there, uh, but we'll see. Uh, let's look at the, the guys, uh, the girls, beg your pardon, okay. that have been uh, scoring the goals. Um, uh, this is in Nigerian Women's uh, uh, Football League. Uh, Cecilia, I'm not surprised at all to see Anna, that name at the top. Anna, Anna Imo. 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 Yeah. What a player. Yeah, she's a fantastic player. Just keep that name and remember her and yeah. see if she can keep this up. Four goals she has scored. She plays for Nasra Amazons. Enjoy Jerry of Bayeso Queens, three. You have Tina Uye Thaleme of Sunshine Queens. She's also got three. Then Nika Julius, I mean, the hat-trick that she got is just still there, so she <laughs> needs to add more. Yes. <laughs> you have a Brume Ikehua of Delta Queens on three goals. You have Patience Agbukade of Sunshine Queens on two. Then Lola Phillips, Aisha Bello, mm -hmm. uh, Peace FM, MMSCM, you have Nanji Bright and Ozunachi. Uh, she is also on two from Confluence Queens. That's what it goes. A score chart is really looking like right now. You'd be expecting to see some familiar names there. Mm. If not, I say them apart from uh, Adam Ibu. <laughs> that is what the, uh, the table. table is yeah. looking like from Group A. Uh, you have Bayeso Queens at the top there after five matches, nine points, which is a good one. They yet to lose a game. Delta Queens also are yet to lose a game. Mm. Ebob Angels, another team, they yet to lose a game. But the draws they've had, all of them have drawn three, winning two. And hence, you have them all on nine points. Of course, the goal difference is just what count, which is just a little very, very tight there. Then you have Rivers Angels, where you expect them to be at the top, but then and this is what they've got because they've lost a game this season. Confluence Queens, they've lost two. Edo Queens have lost two also. Shaw Babes, they're yet to lose, but then they've won one. And of course, they, they, oh, Shaw Babes, sorry, they've lost four games here. They've yet to draw, but then just one win they've had so far this season. Heartland at the bottom, expectedly, because they're yet to win a game this season. They've had just two draws. And of course, how many losses? Three losses. That's why they have just two points there. They come to Group B. What do we have? Nasara Amazons expected 11 points from five games. Now, that is huge. Defending champions, you expect them to also be there. Sunshine Queens is second, 10. Then you have followed by Abia Angels. Of course, Abia Angels, they've lost two games here, and that's why they are there. Just mm -hmm. up there. Then you have Pelican Stars, that uh, team that yet to win uh, this season, just Today, one point. So they have to get SC something uh, in Lagos to ensure that they move out of that. Okay. Lagos Pitch is yeah. the venue, 4 p.m. 4 p.m. Nigerian time. Let okay, we're in Nigeria, right? Let's go on break now. <laughs> <laughs> when we come back, we'll be looking at what's going on in the NBA playoffs.